Hi everyone, this is for those of you who prefer to use Rhino to do your schematic site modeling uh, for this project. So I'm going to run through the, basically the same steps as to how you bring an image in, map it onto the surface, uh, then how you place the buildings, drop those onto the terrain, before which you're going to go through and modify the terrain so you can create building platforms and deal with the grading issues that are there, and then finally put plants on the site. So there are a few differences, a few similarities. So the first thing we're going to start with is a little bit more setup in Rhino to kind of get things so they're going to work right. But the first thing I want to do is actually check on my display styles because once I bring an image in, right now this is just a shaded renderer, but once I bring an image map in, it won't display in the shaded rendering mode. So I need to switch to rendered mode. And uh, when I do so, you know, this is okay, but I'm not really super happy with the quality of this and I'll show you why and well I'll show you why right now there it's shaded you can see that subtly that swale that runs down through here as soon as we go to rendered you lose all that just kind of washes it out it's not a bad look but it really can't see the landform so the way to fix that is simply to go to options and scroll down to the bottom where you get to the view options display modes rendered. And if I scroll down here, you can see right now it's using a lighting method called scene lighting. If I switch to default lighting, it essentially gives me the same shade, the same lighting as the shaded mode, and I like that a lot better. And it, but it will still display the image once we get that applied. Okay, so that's the first step we're going to do. The second step we're going to do is fix these buildings, which we're going to use a little bit later. The reason for that is right now, if we go over to properties, it's a it's a grouped object. And I'm going to demonstrate a script. It's actually over here, this move project each script that allows us to drop these buildings right onto the train once we've modified it. But it, it's looking for a single object to do that with, a block, basically. And besides, if you're going to repeat this geometry in your model, you really want these to be blocks and not groups anyway. So I'm just going to run the block command. I'll start with the apartment building, select those, enter, base point, looks good, we'll call that apartment, and you'll have to do this in yours, the site plan, the site model that I provided, uh, these were just grouped, uh, they should have been made as blocks, but they, uh, they aren't, so let's do block again, select the objects, enter, pick that corner, townhouse, Okay, so now we've got those redefined as blocks. That'll help us a little bit later. And maybe what I'm going to do too is, I don't have my 2D site showing. It's in here, so I'm going to go to Layers, Schematic 1, and then I'm going to select both of these and just get them up here because we're going to arrange them on that 2D version first. Okay, so they're kind of positioned and ready to go now. Okay, the next thing I want to do is bring that image that I drew up my schematic design, uh, has a few road locations, some apartments and townhouses on it. So before I can start arranging things, I need to know where to put them. You can use a Rhino style material if you want, but since this model already has V-Ray materials set up and we also will be using V-Ray later on, it's probably better that you just change and modify the V-Ray material. Now in order to do that, I've got to be able to select that object and you can see here when I do that I'm selecting the whole thing so again another group I'm going to choose ungroup select that enter now I can pick just that object that I want to affect and I'm going to pull up the uh, V-Ray asset editor now I, I need to know what material this is it's not asphalt so if I go over to my properties and materials you can see it's using a plugin, which is V-Ray material, and it's development green. So I can come down here and find that in my list, click on the right flyout, <clears throat> and it just has a color for the diffuse um, image right now, but I'm going to click on this option and choose bitmap. And I have an image that I prepared ahead of time. Uh, really important in this case when using Rhino because we're going to define the, how this is mapped by the bounding box of that shape that the bounding box of your image basically reflects that. So you can see here, I've cropped this right to the leftmost corner, rightmost, the lowest, and the highest, which is the road intersection up there, not actually that dark property line. 
if you have a lot of extra space around the property, when you go to map this, it's not going to line up properly because we want it to fit right against the bounding box of that shape. And you'll see how we do that in just a second. So choose that image and we can go back, close this. So now you see it mapped it on there, but we've got a whole bunch of copies there. That's the tiling. What I want to do is go and do some texture mapping and I'm going to apply a planar mapping to that. Now in the command line, you can see this is where why that bounding box is important. I'm going to choose bounding box, the world coordinates, and UV. And now you can see that once I've done that, I've locked that in slightly off over here. May have been my cropping was a little off, but it's certainly close enough for the schematic phase that we're working on. Okay, so that one's done. Now I'm going to come up here and select my 2D shape, go back to my asset manager, right click on development green and say apply to selection. So once again, kind of different mapping, but it applied that pattern, but it's not, it doesn't have a mapping to know how to fit it on there. So same process, texture mapping, planar, bounding box, world, and UV. Now that's lined up the same way. Okay, now we're ready to start moving buildings around, maybe get those copied and arranged on the site here. Um, but before we can do that, you have to remember in, in Rhino, if we go to move, uh, we can pick a corner. That this, you can see as I move it over the surface, it gets really small. That's because it's snapping all the way down to the construction plane, which is way down here at this lower corner. Since Rhino uses construction planes and it can't actually snap to a surface when you're moving something like this, that's not going to help me too much. So what I need to do is move the construction plane to this 2D object. That is going to help me. Before you do that, however, you have to make sure it's um, pointing the right direction. So when I click on this, it looks like, well, everything's fine. The z-axis is pointing up, right? But if I use this tool, C planes tool, and I say set C plane to surface, and click on that, enter, and I'll accept the default directions. Now when I click on that, you can see that I've got a problem because Z is now pointing down. Now why did that happen if you're asking yourself that? Well that happened because of the direction the normals are pointing on this particular surface. Now Interestingly enough, undo won't fix this, but I can go back to my seaplanes tab and say set seaplane top world, and now it's pointing the right direction. Now, the only way to know which way this is pointing is to run a command called dir direction. Select that, enter, and uh, sure enough, you can see that those vertical arrows are pointing down instead of up. So if I choose flip, they're going to reverse direction, hit enter. And now we've got that pointing the right way so that when I go back and set the seaplane to surface, enter, enter, now it's pointing the right direction. This is super important because uh, later on we'll be using these land design, uh, lands design tools to place plants, uh, either as point objects or within polylines or polygons. And it's based on the direction of the z-axis. So if you don't reverse that, all your trees will be growing upside down and end up underneath the property, which won't help you much. So it's important just to check that out to see uh, that that normal direction depends on the kind of the way that object was created. Um, but the tools are there. It's kind of like reverse faces in SketchUp has a front and a back face. Well, Rhino doesn't have that same thing, but it does keep track of the normal direction. And it becomes important when you're using things like lands design. OK, so now we've got this set here. Now, once we have that set up, we can do move and come down here, select one of these points. There we go. And drop that on there. And now you can see it's actually dropping right onto that surface, which is exactly what I want it to do. OK, another shortcut, which I just learned about. Um, working with Rhino is sometimes, especially when you have this 2D site, 3D below, trying to get it to rotate around a certain point, you can focus on an object and kind of reset that. But if you just hold the control and the shift key down, it orbits right around your cursor. So you can keep things um, orbiting really easily that way. And we can always use the gumball to kind of move things. And we can use the gumball to copy things, but I'll use the copy command. And now I can just grab that corner and 
drop these into place. And since my construction plane is right on that surface, and then I can just go in there and select each of those and use the use the gumball to kind of move them, tweak them into place a little bit. And all the time since the construction plane is on the surface, I know they're going to stay perfectly lined up where they need to be. Blue one, turn that around a little bit. Okay, we've got the apartments kind of basically in place. Let's move the townhouses. So I'm just going to right click, choose move. All right, deselect that apartment building. Right click, move, select, grab the corner. And right click, copy. And again, I'm just going to kind of drop them in place, center them on the footprint, knowing that I can rotate them around later on with the uh, gumball. Actually, these are supposed to be flipped 180. Okay, a little more adjustment here. There we go. All right, so we've got those kind of basically all adjusted now and set right on that building plane. So before we drop those down, now's the time to do a little uh, work on the landform, right? It's not going to match up perfectly. So let's come in here and see how we can adjust this. Now, we don't have a tool like Artisan that just kind of can free freeform um, manipulation of the mesh. But we do have control points, right, and knots that represent how that surface is created. So the first thing we're going to do is turn, click on that, and turn the control points on. Unfortunately, the way this is built right now, the control points are kind of sparse. So they're, they're pretty well spaced apart, and it really doesn't give us there's like one point inside this building, and we need to do better than that. So I am going to insert some more control points using the insert knots command actually. There is an insert control point command, but if you insert control points, it actually changes the surface of the shape of the object. And we don't want to do that. This was created based on contours. We don't want randomly changing. We want to be able to control that. So instead of inserting control points, we're inserting knots. Pick the shape. And now I can just come in here and I'm just going one direction, kind of bringing in extra thirds. And as artisan, you can go in and kind of update a very specific area of the site. These knots spread all the way across, as you can see. That's all right. I can want to go the other direction. I can choose toggle. And I'm just clicking and kind of breaking that up. I don't have to put a specific dimension in there. I'm just trying to add more detail. OK, so that looks pretty good. Now, when you get done with this, you want to make sure you hit Enter. That will lock that in before you switch tools. And turn those points back on again. And now we've got enough points that we can come in here and start trying to level this up. Maybe I could add a few more in, but for the sake of this demonstration, we'll use this. Uh, the command you can use to select those easily is lasso. And it just gives you, a, just like it sounds, a nice little lasso that you can drag around the points. Let go of the mouse, hit Enter. Now we've got those selected. And then we're going to use a command called set point. And we're going to uncheck X and Y because what we, all we, we don't want to move them back and forth. We just want to move them up and down to a level Z. So we'll click that. Try to 
come over to one of these points. click there let's try that again all right right click get the lasso tool there's my points right around there that I want to get Hit enter now we're going to do our set point Z okay got it that time so I need to make sure I'm snapping to some point now once I actually get that set and this doesn't look too bad because it's got to be above the road, right? This has to slope down. I can still use the gumball to say, okay, maybe it doesn't have to be quite that high. I'll just adjust that down a little bit. And then I'm going to come in, repeat the lasso command. Enter. Set point. All right, now same thing, orbit around. You can see it's kind of pulling that up in the back there. Maybe I'll pull that down just a little bit. And I can continue to go through and repeat that for the rest of those building platforms. So another lasso, enter, set point, C. Again, this is starting to step down the hill, so I'm going to drop that one down a little bit more. Still trying to keep it above the road a little bit. All right, and let's do one more. Lasso. Enter. Set point. To Z. You know, I kind of locked that into the last elevation. I'm going to drop that one down a little bit. Okay, now the rest of the manipulation, you know, if you want to smooth this out a little bit, you can just come in here and select these individual points with the gumball turned on and kind of stretch that and manipulate that and smooth that. There's no kind of uh, smooth command, but you can go in there and adjust those individual points. You could also level them to a Z and then rotate them using the gumball so they create more of a uniform slope. Um, so you can experiment with that, but uh, the key is you're just using these control points in order to set those elevations where you want them. And once you've got all that done, you can right click on that, get rid of those control points. And this is where this uh, script comes in. Instead of trying to drop these down manually, uh, this is a script that it's called Move Project RVB. And uh, I'll provide that for you. You just click and drag and drop that into your window. And once you do that, it loads a set of commands move project each is what you want and we can come up here and say okay select each of these blocks enter and then it says target object enter and there you go just drop those right down onto the surface and you can see that where we leveled the platforms it looks pretty nice has pretty good fit And you can always select those individually and move them up and down too if you need to. Again, it's hard to tell where they are exactly, but if you move them up in the air, you can always do move project each. And there you go, just drops it right back down. So you can set all those elevations and drop the buildings that way, and you can see where we didn't manipulate that. Maybe we've got a little bit more. Either it's down in the ground or it's floating a little bit, but that gives you a pretty easy way to manipulate the grading. You know, probably pull this road down in here a little bit and just go back there and make some of those fine-tuned adjustments until you get it the way you want it. Okay, so if we want to drop our other apartments on there, let's do that while we're here. Move project each. Select our buildings. Select the surface, right click, there you go. Drops them right down in there. Now, if you want to drop them down first and then pull your points on and manipulate it, you can see this is actually sloping across here, which if it's a slab on grade building, that's not really going to work very well. But it does fit them on the terrain nicely. And if you want to make adjustments once they're on the terrain, you can do that as well. 
Okay, so the last step in this process then is to actually put some trees on this surface. And again, this is where the 2D version comes in kind of handy because we can do two steps. We can locate the trees up above where we want them. We have the building footprints so we know where the open spaces are. Then we're going to drop them down using uh, uh, the Lands Design plugin for Rhino. It has its own commands to drop things to the surface. Now, one of the things we have to do first is actually select this. Well, we don't have to select it, but let's do it. The command is LA tag object as terrain. Uh, Lands Design creates special objects so it knows where to put drop plants and other elements. And unless it understands, it has its own terrain objects. So if you create one of those, then it's already knows that that's what it is. But in this case, since I didn't use Lands Design to create this topography, we need to tell it just to tag it as a terrain object. Select it, enter. Okay, that's done. Now you'll see how this works when we move up above here. So since the, remember we set the construction plane to this object, so it still is where things want to go. And let's start by, well, we're gonna put a, maybe I'll put a forest on there, but in order to do that, I have to have a closed shape. So I'm gonna choose my polyline. I'm gonna say persistent close is yes. And let's just say I'm going to make a shape around here. And enter. OK, again, since the construction plane is there, it draws it right in that surface. And now I can use that to place plants. So we're going to click on the forest icon. Just go to the lands design tab, forest. The first thing you need to do is pick the plant. Right now, there's nothing in this document. So I'm going to click Browse. I can sort by plant type, get out of the trees. Uh, let's see, what do we have in here? Let's, there's a pin oak. Uh, you can browse through here, see what, what uh, works for you in terms of, again, we're at the schematic level. It's not necessarily about the specific trees, but it's about kind of what shape. And, you know, we've got oaks on there. I don't know if there's a white oak in here, but you can find something that has the basic form. But I'm just going to select that for now. Uh, you can also say I want some natural variation so that every tree doesn't look exactly the same. Maybe I'll set that to 30%. And then up here right now is a pretty small tree, right? I want to I want to bring the crown diameter up to at least 26 and approximate height 35. Can make it a little taller than that. And then click OK. And then it's going to ask me for a polyline. And I'm going to choose that curve. Enter. And it looks like nothing happened. And should have placed those down there. Let's just check and see what happened here. OK, so again, it's the same issue I've been having. They're actually there, but you can't see them the first time that it displays it. So now I'll go to rendered view. It just needs to update and refresh that view. But even though I've drawn that on this 2D version, it knows that's a terrain object and that's where it wants the trees to go. So you can see it just placed all those nicely right on the surface. There we go. Each one is placed exactly where it's supposed to be. So if you don't see it at first, just in this rendered mode, you have to kind of do a little refresh, switch from one to the other, and it'll pop back up. So you can also use that to create, uh, let's say, a line of street trees if you want. So maybe I want to put some street trees along here. Again, I'm going to use my polyline tool. I'm just going to draw where I want those to go. In this case, I'm going to turn off persistent close. And enter. So I've got that done. Now I'm going to use plant row. I'm just going to use the same plant. Now this is a case where maybe I'll make them a little smaller and I'm going to uncheck natural variation. If you want street tree plantings to be uniform, then that works a little bit better. Pick the curve, enter. It says it's inserted. Again, doesn't look like it's appearing. We switch back to shaded, switch back to rendered. There they are. Little glitch in the display function there, but
Okay, and then you can actually go back and edit these these as well. Um, I think you can select that, go to Lands Tools, go to our Edit Panel. Plant Rows. So we have a number of units in here. If we think that's a little too dense, we want to set that down to 20. You can see it just changed the spacing. If I want that to 10, uh, I can spread that out. So it's a parametric, kind of like scatter works in SketchUp. Uh, and you can kind of adjust it either by number of units or separation. Let's maybe make that 15. So you can go into this edit mode, select the forest, select the row of trees, and then go in and edit that. So again, pretty effective way to actually put trees in. Uh, in Rhino, uh, and it's again works the same way as Scatter does. It's using proxies. So if we go into our V-Ray and do a rendering, you'll see that it's generating very detailed plants for the render. So these are simple versions of the plants, even though it's in render mode. And you can, if you notice there, it changed just before the V-Ray window opened. It's basically loading in this super high resolution version that includes all the details of the bark and the leaves and the branching structure. And that's what it's using to render it so that it allows you to put lots of plants in, into Rhino uh, in a way that you just simply couldn't do if it was raw geometry. Now, remember, I didn't take the time to do this, but highly recommend that you set up. Now, you can see if you have plant rows, you can call it street tree plantings, uh, you know, forest woodland plantings or plant tree massings, go ahead and set up layers within Rhino and then move those groups of objects or trees to those layers. And that way you can turn those off and on if you don't need to see them. But uh, it certainly gives you a, a way to kind of start getting a feel for that. And as you can see, as it renders through, I won't let this go that long, but you can start seeing that it's going to add really nice texture and detail to it. OK, so again, no geometry on the ground. We're going to use let the image speak for that. We just want to be able to go in here and add uh, the plants, the buildings. And I'd highly recommend that you can come in and add some cars, some people. Uh, if you don't have Rhino versions of that, you can uh, find SketchUp components, open them in SketchUp, and then save them out as version 8, I believe. Uh, I haven't checked Rhino 6 for sure, but uh, I know for Rhino 5, you couldn't open any SketchUp models newer than version 8 which creates some limitations. But for components, it should be fine. At least you can bring a few cars and people in, 3D people, to get uh, a sense of scale there. If you have other components or blocks that you've discovered other places, that's great. Just remember, keep them organized by layer and uh, uh, use lands design to insert the plants. We're not asking for details down at the shrub level, just basic plant massings. Uh, it also has a function that you can paint plants on, just like you can kind of you can do in Scatter. So experiment with these tools. Each one has a little different effect, but basically tree massings, street tree plantings is what we're looking for. So hopefully that'll get you on your on your way with Rhino, and you'll be able to uh, create these schematic models.